What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. What's up people? <laughs> and so today we're gonna do a little bit of a follow-up of the situation that happened with our lithium battery. We're Alejo and Andrea and we've been living on our off-grid sailboat for the past two years. Recently we hauled out our boat and attempted to install a BMS on our lithium batteries, but things didn't go as planned. It means no worries. Let's go back a little bit in time. As you guys know, we were going to do a BMS installation on our lithium batteries. That was before we did the haul out. We had been planning that installation for almost four months now. Yeah, like four months. So the idea from changing the BMS, which is the battery management system, is that our inverter charger for the batteries, it's a SMA and it has a CAN bus communication that we can connect it to the batteries if the batteries had a CAN bus communication. The big batteries, they don't have a CAN bus. They're like any regular lithium battery, they're like closed and they have their own BMS. So we wanted to upgrade our BMS to have a CAN bus communication so you can communicate with the inboard. That's why we wanted to change the battery manual. So today we are gonna be installing the BMS on the big battery. Usually they use this for electric vehicles since you can do a lot, you can modify like a lot of parameters in the battery and it tells you a lot of information about each cell and so that's why they use it on electric vehicles. So we're gonna be doing the installation today, we're gonna go over it, we're gonna see how the batteries are inside after eight months. If there's any damage, we'll notice, we'll let you guys know. This is how they send us the BMS, it's packed very well, bubble wrap, each piece. So I'm gonna take it out, put it in the table, put it how it's gonna be connected so we can have an idea. And then that way we'll just take out the batteries and start putting everything together and that's it. So here we have the cell group module. One of these ones go one per battery pack and this goes connected to the little cell module which is gonna be eight per battery pack. This goes to a three-way connector, which we can connect all the battery packs together so the BMS can control the four packs. So it's gonna be one BMS for the whole four pack. Instead of having four BMSs like we have now. We have just turned off the inverter. The so we're turning off the batteries, turning off the inverter so we can get started. We're just gonna have one right one BMS for all four batteries of lithium. <sighs> Two more baby. Two more. Let's do this. Six and a half hours later. So we're good. We have all four batteries out of the hole. This is where they're set up. And so now we're ready to do the installation of the BMS system. Okay guys, so we're gonna start by taking apart the battery, the first battery. This is going to be test number one. Test number one. <laughs> and then we'll do rinse and repeat on three, three, two, two, three and four. So okay. here you can see the BMS. Okay. That's originally from big battery. And here's the fuse. It's a 300 amp fuse inside this gun, which is pretty good. The BMS that it has, it's a really good BMS. It has temperature cutoff sensors. It's it's a good, but it's simple, right? So for us, it doesn't work because we want something that we could see like the state of charge and that the inverter can communicate with the batteries. And that way, like we have uh, more efficiency with the solar. We're gonna take off the cover and it's pretty incredible. It's really nice. It has like a foam here. Okay. And then it's covered with uh, like plastic so the terminals are not touching metal or near metal. So the first thing that he's gonna do is just take out the BMS. So we're gonna try to put everything here on the top. So that way, like when we service the batteries, we could just open the top of the battery and we'll put the new BMS and everything like, like on this one. When 
you're using tools for the batteries that don't have isolation like this one, right? You don't want to touch the positive and negative of the same cell because you'll damage the battery, the cell, or even the BMS. So yeah, very important to keep that in mind. We are on the process of removing the BMS. Just finished removing the BMS. This is for the power button, which I think we're gonna take off. And then I'm gonna take out this, which is the bus bar. As you can see, you're connected positive negative, positive negative, positive negative. It's pretty cool. Instead of bus bars, it's pretty nice. And the BMS was connected here, so I guess they run the cables through the inside or through here. You can see it there. Okay guys, so I'm done removing the nuts and washers. Let's see how it looks. So the weight on of these batteries, there's a platform right here. So every four batteries, there's a little platform and then it starts again. So this last one is not like squished by all of the eight batteries. Now we put all the cell modules like in the negative. So this one was a negative. This one was um, negative, 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 negative. And now we are going to start adding these guys to the installation. So you can see negative, positive. Okay. We have finished adding the cable, connecting the cable from the negative to the positive. Okay. So what these things do is that they also balance the cells. So if this one pack, there's one cell that's like, uh, I don't know, like 3.1 volts and all of them are 3.2. So they stop charging like the other ones and they just put energy into that cell. Or if one cell is too high, then this can discharge that cell a little bit so everything matches. If you guys have been following us for a while, you know that before this bag batteries, we actually had LG Chem Lithium batteries and we had to change them for the big batteries because one day we just woke up and nothing was working. We had no electricity on the boat and the reason was because one of the cells was actually unbalanced. By the way guys, if you guys are interested in learning more about big battery, there is a 10% discount that they are giving us. Um, you can go to livinghakuna.com forward slash big battery and you'll get a 10% discount on your next order They you they have leaking batteries for vans or bees for boats for anything that you want They are your go-to place. I'm putting temperature sensors On the cells and I could just put it between the cells And go back there So that way we can know the temperature of every cell so now what we're doing is we're making the connections from each cell module to each other, right? So this one's connected to this one, this one to this one, so it's a chain. And then those cell modules are connected to the cell module group. And so how it's connected to that one, to a cell module group, is the first one and the last one. It's connected to a cell module group, which you can see up there. Because we know that anything that has to do with the electric system, it could just make things really bad if they don't go as properly planned. <laughs> so that's the reason why we wanted to do the BMS installation as we had our boat hauled out in the boatyard. We still have the batteries in standby. We're waiting for some verification before, before we finish putting them together. I was gonna start on the third one. This is how it looks. So we now have the connection between each cell module and it's connected to the group cell module here. And from here, it goes to a little like, connector so we can connect all the cell modules together. And then from here, it goes to a main unit, which is the G1, the BMS. As you guys can see, the boat is a mess. We have a bunch of things laying around. This is boat work. True story. This happens every once or two years. We like to do it every two years. Uh, a lot of people do it once a year, but yeah, it's a pain in the butt. But when you do a haul out, there's a lot of surprises because once you start taking things apart, you could just find uh, little things that need to be like replaced or, or fixed. So if you have a budget, you're gonna always go over that budget because there's always things to do on a boat. 
So I'm taking apart the third battery of big battery and it, I, I just want to show you guys it, these batteries are pretty amazing and this is a good thing that most battery builders you can't do you can't take them apart so once the battery goes dead it's dead and you have to throw it away these batteries if one cell is damaged you can open it take out that cell and just replace it so we're just gonna keep taking apart the third battery these two are done well almost done i just have to organize the cables up top but here on the front it's pretty nice it's already set up so this the cell module so this one will communicate to that one and it goes in a chain right and then we have positive on one side and the negative on the other side they come the negative comes through a fuse and they're connected to this anderson connector and that's how we connect them to the boat but we have the four batteries they're already with the cell modules they have the cable to the cell module group which is this one all right so now you're gonna move the batteries back to the room to and the start room. connecting we had already planned for that and we had spoken with the company that we were going to do the bms installation from um and everything seemed to be fine right like yeah. everything seemed to be on schedule everything was fine but um we started doing the installation and let's show you guys because we can go back in time a little bit and show you how the installation works how do you feel about this installation jesus it's hard i thought it was gonna be easier but currently it has been hard so we have spent over what like today the entire day yesterday like it's a lot of work more than a day more than like all the work is just a lot of information like you basically have to read over the entire manual and we're talking it's like yeah. 126 pages of literally non-subject and even then you don't remember half of the stuff because it's like connections where goes what and it makes you feel like you're dumb Right? It makes you feel like you don't understand anything. But Jesus. So now we're trying to figure out exactly how it is that you connect the cells to the control BMS. unit, which is the BMS. And then how the BMS is going to connect to the inverter. Because then it's like different connections and what goes where. Like how do you determine that? And everything looks sort of like this. Like super freaking complicated. A bunch of little cables, who knows what goes where, and like this. But it's not really like that specific, to be honest. <laughs> I think this is like a setup for like an electrical engineer, or like someone who has had like 20 years of education. <laughs> and we're here just trying to figure this out. You have Cell RX, Cell TX, E, Cell, okay. Cell RX negative, cell RX positive, cell TX negative, cell TX positive, right? Sí. Okay. Entonces dale, conecta. Los <laughs> cables como el verde y el negro mm -hmm. y esos <sighs> How are we doing, baby? Did you finish all the connections now? We installed the systems, right? And we contacted the company and they told us, yes, it looks fine. We sent them a video of the cables of how it had been installed. The representative, the customer service rep said it looked fine, but then um, the batteries were not connecting with the BMS. Yes, correct. Right? The BMS wasn't turning on, on the batteries. Like it had no power and the cells weren't communicating between each other. So then we had to go back to the company and say, hey, it's not working, what is going on? And so we were on a, doing a Google meet, like a Zoom meeting with them over the computer to try to figure out what we had done wrong. As you guys know, the past couple of days, we've had a really hard time doing the installation of the BMS on the batteries. But today we had a two hour call about the installation of the batteries and we had actually installed the cables wrong. What you want to do if you guys decide to buy a BMS is just jump on a call with them, unfortunately. Make sure you understand the system yeah. first. Read the manual. The manual, it has a lot of information. 
but it's not complete. Yeah, it's it's like a overall manual. So they have, I mean, this system you could configure in a lot of like battery packs, and it has a lot of like components. So that's like an overall manual, but it's not like a specific manual for your installation. Hi, good. I'm here. Nice to meet you. Glad to meet you. Glad to help you. We we want that your system is running. And I will just initiate the discovery, and you can just look to see if they blink or not. We were basing our installation on the manual. Um, our experience was that the manual was not too yeah. specific. Yeah, it's like a general manual. They don't give you a manual for a certain installation. They'll just give you a general and then you have to just figure it out. So that's why we, we did the error that we did. Plus, that's why also the representative from the company thought it was correct. installed correctly because even... According to the manual, yeah, it, was correct, it was correct. But right. according to the way to they our had planned installation, our installation, it wasn't, it wasn't correct. correct. Right. So we were in a two hour call and we couldn't figure out what was going on with the cell modules. They weren't communicating. So this is what happened. So this little computer communicates to each cell module so it has two cables coming out the top and bottom this one which has negative and then the communication cable to the cell module it has to be connected to the most negative what the most negative means is the cell that connects to a negative and the most positive is the one that connects to the most positive so we had it like the other way so we just switched that on the four packs and they're working. I don't know if you could see a little light blinking. We also had the, the from the three way to the G1 unit, we had it wrong. So just to do a quick recap on the installation. So we have the cell modules, they communicate with each other and then they go to the group cell module communication which is this one and from that one each battery you can see each battery comes out and we have them coming into a three-way communication so this is the last battery then that one communicates to this one and then it communicates to this one to this one to this one and the last one so we have five because all the batteries communicate to this one and the inverter is connected to this one and from here, we go into a G1 G unit, G1 unit, which is the BMS. We have all the power supply. And I need to clean up all the cables. Once we get it going, I'm gonna start cleaning it up, putting it nice and pretty. And yeah, that's it. How do you so, feel? We're gonna give it a so test run. Finally, yeah, we're gonna give it a test run. Finally turn on the boat. It's been five days with no, right? Five days since we- Yeah, like four days. Four days since we started doing the installation. So we've had no energy. A lot of our food went bad. So that was, that yeah. really sucked, but- Let's do it. Finally getting it is working. So we're gonna finish putting the covers on all the cell modules. And then we're going to just put them where they belong. On top of all the work that we had been doing at the boatyard, you know guys, if you haven't seen the previous videos, you can go back to the previous videos. We had to do the bottom paint, we had to do the engine services, the servicing of the engines, we had to do like polishing, we had to do, oh my God, a bunch of things that <laughs> don't even come to like point here, but it was a lot of things to, on top of that, be worried about the installation, right? So mind you, at this point, we already had zero electricity on the boat. As you guys know, we had to like cook, take out our camping stove because we ended up like cooking on the camping stove for that entire week. We did not have any electricity, any electricity on, the on the boat, right? Then we started having this Google meetings and this daily calls, daily with, the calls with the company, like two hours, three hours daily calls. We were trying to schedule our time to match their time and, and 
in Europe and so it was a little like complicated but we managed to make it happen so we went through like the entire installation and then it was fine like the batteries were working the BMS was working everything was everything working. was working fine we are happy to get our boat back in the water and go sailing again and exploring Woo! we're in the water yes <laughs> Look at these engines, how smooth they are! We are moving fast, we're moving furious. We are flying with these engines. So they put us back in the water, everything seems to be working fine. We had just done this 10 days of massive, exhausting work. <laughs> and we had spent a ton of money, which we're gonna tell you guys about in another video. So anyway, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified on that future video about the cost of the haul out. But, after doing all that work, we get back in the water and we have no electricity. We did have electricity. Our batteries were working, but um, the BMS was, I don't know, like the running time on the main unit wasn't working. And then the charge setting on the BMS, it didn't want to change. So the guys from, from this company, they tried to change it. Uh, then they told us that they needed two weeks to make it work because this installation wasn't just like install it and that's it. Apparently they didn't tell us that from the beginning that they needed two weeks to make it work. Right. And so, I mean, for us, uh, that didn't work out. And on and top of that, the generator blew a capacitor. So now we had a semi working gen generator that didn't want to take too much load because then it all just blow and so yeah it, it wasn't a good experience and i think that's why we decided to remove it from our batteries and go back to the original the big original battery BMS. as you guys know we have been having an issue with something happening with the batteries where we cannot ch charge the batteries with the generator uh, so since we have been running the air conditioning units day and night because it is so 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 hot right now in Grenada we need to charge the batteries right but we can't because when we try to turn on the generator it shuts down by itself says like it all the the voltage goes up to like 250 volts and it says like to reduce the load so we have tried turning on the generator with no loads just disconnecting it completely it's still not working wait Alejo is trying to fix it so far we have found that the charger that goes from 220 to 12 volts was messed up, was broken. Yeah, the connection wasn't good because the guys that installed the, the davits, the reinforcements, they broke the connection. So yeah. we broke that, well, we found that. Plus, I think the breaker from the solar to the inverter, it's bad. So that's why we're getting an over voltage. The impeller of the generator, which is right there, it was like in pieces, like in a million pieces. So, so there wasn't any water coming out of the boat. And that's how we thought that there was something wrong with the impeller. Alejo just removed the impeller, the pieces left of the impeller, which one of the pieces went through one of the hoses. And yeah, we're trying to fix that. So, not what you want to do so this is test number 135 of testing the generator and seeing if it's going to connect just overall it was a stressful couple of weeks because that meant that we couldn't have any air conditioner a couple of days like we didn't have ac to run um mind you here in grenada like in summer it gets Hot. really hot 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 so for us it was super important for the dogs like we it was just painful seeing them like all the time like exhausted for us like we were just sweating like there was a reason why we installed the ac we want to run that thing when it's hot and so that was the situation so we ended up changing it back to the old bms right if we could go back in time would we would try to do it again i think my answer will be no if it's working, if it's working fine, leave it. just leave it and don't mess with it. Don't try to make it better. Just leave it working until it breaks. The electric system is just super complex. It's it's very like 
I don't know, it's just such a complex system and like unless you know exactly like every little, you know, like the, the specifications of the BMS, the specifications of the battery, like you know every little item, it just can mess up everything and for us, like maybe for someone else that they just live in a marina where they don't rely on their, on their battery system, it's okay to like make changes and risk having some time without electricity. For us, we live off grid. We rely on our batteries just for our daily, everyday life. Like they didn't say that it, like the installation will take two weeks. We didn't think it. Um, I mean, it's a BMS. A BMS, you just connect it and make it work and mm -hmm. put the par parameters, and it should work. They shouldn't be just like testing things out and see what works and see what doesn't. Yeah. It shouldn't be like that. So we felt like. As we were having this calls with them, we felt like they were testing different parameters to see what worked. And on our end, we had already sent them the specifications of our entire system, including the generator, batteries, everything like our inverter, everything that we had, we had, to, we had sent that to them way ahead of time, like five months before. So they had tested, according to them, they had tested our system in their uh, headquarters or warehouse or whatnot. We felt that they were just testing and they weren't sure about what parameters went with our system. With our system, yeah. Like they were just testing, let's see if this works, let's see if this works. Yeah, is that a problem with the company? I don't know. This is our first time doing an installation of, our BM, of a BMS. We can't judge the company, but we're not gonna say we're happy with it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I like your point. Okay, good job. <laughs> So, yeah. so I think that's the story about the BMS. I think um, I hope that helps you guys at least know how to do the installation of a BMS. At least know whether it's something worth doing, worth trying. Um, for us, like I said, like we said, it wasn't. But that is it for today's video. Yeah. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you hit that bells so that you can be notified when we upload the next video, where we're gonna tell you all about the cause of doing oh. the haul out here in Grenada yeah. and everything that we did. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see you in the next one. Peace.